Yeah, Daniel. Um, in fact, I know he even he even told me once, uh, I don't like that guy. This guy. This is not my kind of guy. All right, so, Why though? Hey guys, this video was inspired by Sheldon Ludish's book from Vietnam to Van Damme. Make sure to check it out. It's really good behind the scenes stuff on his filmmaking journey. Uh, linked in the description below. But anyway, he had mentioned something in the book and I wanted to get more info. And that's the really cool thing about this channel is because I've met a lot of these people, I could actually go straight to the source and ask them to get more clarity. But regardless, get this book. There's so much in here now obviously he can't put everything in here otherwise it'd be like you know this thick or something but in this one it has to do with daniel bernhardt and paco prieta because apparently sheldon wanted paco prieta in perfect target which would have been amazing but uh if you read the book I, I guess daniel didn't really like him i wanted to know more this is a story that must be told so anyway if you like this kind of content please help support the channel Hit the like button, subscribe, share the video. And this is in your book, but you didn't really expand on this part. Maybe you don't even know. Uh, going back to Perfect Target with Daniel Bernhardt, you were trying to get Paco Prieta in that movie, which would have been amazing. Yeah. But 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 I guess Daniel Bernhardt, you think, had some kind of issue with him? Yeah, Daniel. Um, in fact, I know he even he even told me once, uh, I don't like that guy. All right. Why so though? I Paco had a uh, uh, had, had a big personality. Well, hello, Cosina. Stay on the bus, Diana. Uh, he would draw attention. Uh, when, when, you know, if you have Paco and a, a group of people, all eyes are going to go to Paco. <laughs> Roll up in the club. Yeah, right. All eyes on me. Because uh, he was very charismatic. Which is um, why he'd be perfect for the movie. Yeah. Yeah, a, a very ch charismatic, but also um, Paco is a real badass. OK, he was oh, the sure. real deal. And you look at Paco and you just know if this guy threatens you, uh, he means it and he really can kick your ass. Come on, you want to play with me? Huh? Come on. This time I play for keeps. And this time I don't play. Uh, Come on. Come on. And I think maybe uh, maybe Daniel felt a bit intimidated by him. Maybe he felt it. Paco would steal the show. Uh, Interesting. And he might have. Actually, Paco just, 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 well, look at Paco and Only the Strong. Yeah, he's amazing um, in that. And that's like his first great. big he's role, great. you know? People loved him. Sure. And um, he would kind of steal the show when he was on camera, but he didn't steal the movie away from Mark. Mark's pretty much uh, oh, yeah. was, was the star of that movie. And, and um, uh, that's who we were, we were watching from start to finish. Um, so I think, um, but Mark's got a lot of uh, uh, a lot of personality himself. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got a lot of charisma, and um, I think Daniel was maybe uh, afraid that Paco would steal his thunder. That that could very well be. Now I was just talking to my casting director just yesterday, the, the guy who did the casting, uh, Jim Tarzia, mm -hmm. and uh, I was l lamenting to him uh, the fact that. Uh, I thought Paco would have been great in that role, but he and the producers all had uh, issues because they were afraid there was a lot of dialogue for uh, the character, uh, for the Ramirez character. And they were afraid that Paco couldn't handle the dialogue. Personally, I felt that he could because uh, he had a lot of dialogue and only the strong. Yeah, exactly. Also, and his wife was uh, his wife had studied acting at one time. His wife was there with him and she was running lines with him all the time. And I thought he did a terrific job. Um, not every take was perfect, but um, you get enough good moments, you put it together and it, and it works. And mm -hmm. Paco really, uh, you know, he, he, I wouldn't say he dominated the film because it's, it's really, it's really Mark's film. Uh, but when Paco's on, on, on the uh, screen, you're noticing him. Okay. You're, you're paying attention to him. Um, and I think, um, I, yeah, I, I do think maybe that had something to do with it. So the producers were worried that uh, Paco couldn't handle all the dialogue. And I think Daniel was worried that Paco was going to steal his thunder. Um, and he would have had to have fight scenes with Paco. And, um, and, and Paco is not, um, he's pretty accurate, but he did, 
he did kick Jean Claude in the face. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard about Lionheart, that. Lionheart. <laughs> okay, which which made us shut down for about forty five minutes. We were putting ice packs on Jean Claude's face because hey, when Paco kicks you, it's a real kick. One time, uh, Jean Claude t- told me, uh, "Hey, Paco, send me the kick, man. Send me the kick." I said, "Jean Claude, we're too fast. I'm going to hit you." I said, I don't care, just send me the kick, man. I expect it. So I send him a run house and I, I barely I touch him in his his you know this side of the face. And uh you know they stop a little bit the, the shooting because of that. Oh, so you and actually they, hit him. <laughs> right, right. Accidentally. So he, he he took it good like a man, you know, no problem. But yeah. Um and um uh and he did accidentally kick Mark also when we were shooting only the strong um but he had those boots on uh yeah. and uh so it was kind of hard to uh control his kicks but you know that looked that was an accident also but even so the star doesn't want to get kicked in the face all right not so much so i don't know if maybe daniel was a little nervous about that um all i know is the producers told me no we're not going to use paco we're going to use this guy uh, jim Peary. Who was a good actor, actually, and I thought I thought he did a good job in the role, um, but he was not a fighter, so um, we had to have. Um, uh, let's see, I think um, I think Chad, yeah, Chad actually was the stunt double for the Ramirez character throughout oh, the film, like all wow. this crazy stuff that you see Miguel doing. That's Chad Stahelski. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, when you, we had fight scenes, uh, it's Chad Stahelski in there doing the fights. Um, yeah, I think, and Daniel actually had a little bit of an issue with Brian Thompson, too. And Brian right. Thompson is another one who's um, yeah, very strong and charismatic and uh, uh, draw, draws your attention when he's on camera. So we had Brian in the film as well. And there's a fight scene between Brian and Daniel that uh, uh that comes off uh, uh pretty well mm-hmm. we had chad supervising every uh, every and, and chad and daniel worked together like on blood sport 2 for example correct so well, that's how i that's how I, I got introduced to chad was through daniel because uh chad worked on blood sport uh, 2 and maybe on, on 3 as well so um chad was very very helpful and instrumental with making those those fight scenes and action scenes look good yeah, and one one guy had mentioned, uh, and this might almost tie into Daniel might have thought Paco would steal the thunder, uh, and I want to get your thoughts on this. One guy had mentioned, you know, that that he didn't think uh, Daniel Bartnart had like the so called X factor, right? Like, right. what what are your thoughts on that? Is that is that the reason you think he didn't really blow up like people like Van Dam did, or do you think it was something else? Yeah, it's just that um, it's just that mysterious X factor that guys like Jean-Claude have, that Mm -hmm. Arnold Schwarzenegger has, Stallone has it. In the next part of the interview with Sheldon Lettich, we'll talk about that so-called X factor. Is it charisma? Is it related to charisma? Is it something else? And Sheldon also brings up the Y and Z factor, which may be equally as important as to why certain individuals just make it so big in Hollywood. 